As the World Annual Vaccine Week is observed this year with the theme The Big Catch Up, the World Health Organization is working with countries across the globe to raise awareness of the value of vaccines with the aim of bringing the program back on track so that more people can be protected from vaccine-preventable diseases. We will be analyzing that on The Breakfast this morning, and also we will be joined by our guests to make sense of the headlines in the newspapers this morning. Very good morning to you and welcome to The Breakfast at this Wednesday morning. My name is Nyam Gul. Good morning, I am Maureen Menongi Zigwe. Today we're going to be looking at a lot of things. Uh, the status of Nigeria's healthcare system is going to be part of the discussion and uh, we hope to have so many guests that will, well, not, not so many guests, but uh, <laughs> a relevant guests to discuss this uh, with us. Uh, you know that today, or a few days ago, there was a, uh, we marked World Malaria Day. It has passed, but the world uh, is rejoicing that we are now having a malaria vaccine. And this year's theme was Time to deliver zero malaria. Invest, innovate, implement. But the focus for this year was actually on the last I, which is implementation. And we do hope that that implementation will be um, done well and people will adhere to all the instructions that are given by the health experts and all that. Oh yes, and it is important that we consider how to get rid of malaria, mm. especially being one of the most hit by that yeah. pandemic. Yeah. Um, I'm not excited that this vaccine is coming from abroad. Yeah, that's, uh, I was going to talk about that because the people who are even really serious about eradicating malaria from planet Earth, if it is possible, mm. are the people who may not even have this malaria worrying them the, the way it worries us in tropical Africa. Nigeria loses, from what I saw in a report, 300,000 people every year mm. to this. Yeah. 92 million people suffer it every year. 300,000 die from it every year. So this is something that Nigeria should have, before now, mm -hmm. found some, something uh, to, to fix. Yeah, and you, so, like you gave the statistics, 619,000 malaria deaths in 2021 all, uh, alone. Mm -hmm. 247 million new cases of malaria in 2021 alone. Mm -hmm. And 95% of all malaria cases are in African region, in the WHO African region. So uh, it is a worrisome thing. It Sorry. is more prevalent here. But you know, <laughs> there was a time that the WHO and the Ministry of Health were giving free mosquito nets to families. And I had a very, a very annoying experience where I went to a particular village and every family got um, these free nets, maybe sometimes two, maybe sometimes three. And guess what they were using it for? They were using it to plant vegetables. Are you kidding me? They would plant me? vegetables, put the net around the vegetables so that uh, birds will not come and eat it or, they, or, or chicken will not come and destroy it. That's what they were using it for. Something that was given to you to save your life. So I don't know the level of orientation we can give to our people before they know that this thing is for their own good. Yeah, that's, that's one. Orientation is key. And also, I do remember some time ago I was told by a good lady, old lady, that there was a time when governments were involved in fumigation, yeah. regular fumigation of the gutters. Mm. But that was during the colonial era. Mm -hmm. When the colonial masters left, those administrators, the white administrators, it all stopped after a while. And so you ask, why did it stop? Well, when the opportunity was in our hands to do the right thing, then we, I don't know, should we be colonized again? Well, God forbid. God but forbid. <laughs> can't we just rise above what we are doing now? Eh, well, we are sad, uh, just like everybody in the, in, the, in the broadcast world, in, the, in our kind of world, that we lost a, a legend in the person of Peter Inahoro. Yeah, though he died at uh, a good 88, ripe age. yeah, 88. Well, we still miss him because yeah, even at that time, uh, I'm sure he was still very, uh, very important to us, talking to us, advising us, giving us uh, pointers uh, where we needed them. And he is perhaps one of the most recognized 
uh, African journalist. Oh, yes. And he died in London. Well, may his soul rest in peace. Amen. Mm. We knew him as uh, Peter Pan as well. Because oh, he yes. had a very wonderful column that he was writing. He died in London on Monday. And a very handsome man. Yeah, yeah, he was. He was. Okay, we also have another trending story. We've just, we are entering our, our trending stories. An actor uh, died after 12 cosmetic surgery procedures. Mm -hmm. 12 cosmetic surgery procedures. St. Von Colucci, 22, mm -hmm. died uh, wanting to look like someone else. Yeah. And he spent $220,000 on those surgeries, 12 of them, uh, to play K-pop star Jimin for a U.S. streaming network. Okay, who is to blame in this case now? Is it the people who wanted him to play this part and look like him, like the person he was playing his part, or himself accepting to do that? Who is to blame now? Why would you do 12... By the way... Two hundred and twenty thousand dollars is a, a, like one hundred and sixty million naira no, on the black market. No, don't convert it to naira. <laughs> <So, laughs> don't so, convert it to naira. So that's it, what I was thinking. You know, the tragic thing is that there are many people over there who have even done more surgeries yeah. than he's done. I mean, there are those who wanted to be like uh, Ken mm. and 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 uh, what's the name of the other doll? Yeah, Barbie. Barbie. Yeah. and they've done so many life-altering surgeries to look like this char these characters and they've survived. So it's unfortunate what has happened to him. I don't know who to blame seriously in Yamgo, uh, but the rate of cos cosmetic surgeries yeah. these days is alarming. It's alarming. It's, it's alarming. alarming. Uh, I, I hear uh, in Lekki, um, well, <laughs> maybe that's not it but you know women are doing the brazilian butt lift yeah it's it's so much and and after a while a lot of them come out to say that it was not worth it because sometimes they have side effects that are not good enough i just wonder why people cannot be uh, satisfied with what their natural body is and try to look for other natural ways to enhance them if they must enhance them because there are exercises for for, for instance, but people are not ready to hit the gym or to do the specific exercises to give them what they want. They just want the easy way. Go get uh, some things pumped into your body and that's the it. I don't know. When will we start developing that confidence that we need in our bodies? You know, when I see those um, so stories of such surgeries, look, it, well, everyone is entitled to how they want to look and how they want to feel and what channels they think they should take to feel that way. They will say it's their body and so it's their choice. I wouldn't go that route. And it is sad when you see blacks doing that, especially Nigerians, because we are naturally endowed. Most Nigerians, mm -hmm. most black women have that natural endowment, you know, mm -hmm. to be covetous and all of that. Uh, so I don't know. It's, it it's only me. those who have done it that can explain. It, it worries me. It worries me. And then not only uh, maybe butt lifting, uh, the rate of, um, uh, of bleaching, mm -hmm. even all, with all the side effects that we know, because yes, for a time you might look very beautiful, but it comes a time where uh, you will spend more money trying to maintain that than, than what you spend to get to that point. You... you, you let me not even say. <laughs> Let me not even say. You are speechless. It's well, left you speechless. Whoever is doing well, you know, you are, you are, you are entitled to your, your own opinion about yourself and about what beauty is, how to define beauty and all that. But, you know, there is always someone for someone. Mm -hmm. Like, there's someone who will adore you mm -hmm. just the way you are. Yeah, so, but how many people understand that? Oh, well, well, maybe we should get them to understand <laughs> Okay, uh, well, it's still the breakfast and we're hoping that wherever you are, you're preparing to, to have a wonderful day and we're hoping that wonderful day will give everybody the peace of mind. Because when you smile, it translates into making so many other people around you smile. And they say when you start your day with a smile, the day is likely to end with a smile. So try and have that smile today.